But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent before him. We can go ahead and get started as we celebrate the life of James Rodney Johnson. Um, today, We sit in a very challenging seat. And grief is a part of the fabric of life that stitches humanity together. And the only way to avoid grief is to avoid love. And to avoid love reduces the possibility of living a real, authentic life because we celebrate a God that is love, and God is love. So today as we celebrate the life and honor the memory of our dear cousin, father, brother, nephew, Rodney Johnson, we are reminded of the profound impact that he had on each of our lives. Rodney, 
as many of us knew him as, was not just a man, but he was a beacon of light, a source of unwavering love, and a steadfast pillow of strength in our lives today. Because Rodney lived a life of love. And if you knew Rodney, you knew love. So anyone that came in contact with Rodney could not help but love Rodney. As I was reading his obituary, say that he was always the best friend. He was always that best brother. He was always that best cousin. So before we go any further, can we just stand and give God praise for the life of James Rodney Johnson? Can you open your mouth and tell God thank you for the life? Let God know how much you thank him for his life. Let God know how much you adore, adore God, how much you love God, how much we praise God. We give God praise. We give God reverence. We love God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the life and for the legacy of our dear cousin, friend, father, Rodney Johnson. You may be seated. We're not going to hold you long because as we promised you, Brittany, we're not going to do an out, long out funeral, but this is supposed to be a great time because of the weather, we brought it to the inside. So this is not your uh, regular funeral that you will attend and everything. So it's very, going to be very, very short and brief. We have the outline here. We ask that you will follow it according to that. We will have our scripture reading coming from Rocky Graham. And then we'll have our prayer coming from Kendrick Pearson. Following that, we'll have a musical selection. Following that musical selection, we will have some family sharing coming from Ms. Rosalie Hennigan, who was a cousin, and coming from Mr. Ricky Oliver, who also was a cousin. Following that, then I will come back with a brief eulogy. Amen, not a sermon, but a eulogy, okay? Amen, amen. The, the program has been outlined. Our scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning our reading at the 51st verse. It reads this, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death shall be swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the law, and the strength of sin is the law. But, but thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, yes. unmoved, yes. always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the family find strength in the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear most holy and precious God, we thank you for, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. for just being with us right now. Thank you, Lord, for the life Brother Ronnie lived. Thank you, Lord, for the life that he impacted, God. The people that he encouraged, God. The love that he gave, God. God, he could not give love, God, if he didn't have the love of you. So, God, we thank you, God, for what you have given him, God, in this time of living. 
But God, we come today, God, to ask for comfort for the family, God. Pray, God, that you give them peace, God, that you will be with them, God, through this time, God. We pray, God, that you continue to carry them, God, and let them know, God, that one day we all have to leave this place. But God, while we're here, God, continue to love one another, God. Continue to encourage one another, God. So God, we just say thank you right now, God. For just being our God, for being our Savior of the world, God. We we thank you, God, because you are so generous, God. You, God, you, 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 God, you give us grace and mercy, God, what we do not deserve, God. And God, we say thank you, Holy Spirit. So God, we ask you right now, God, for a peace of mind for the family, God. I pray, God, for the children. For the brothers and sisters, God. We we ask you, God, to keep them right now in the name of Jesus, God. But God, we thank you for the life that is here right now, God. We thank you, God, that you gave us life. And God, that we continue, God, to cherish every moment, every second, God, of every breath that we take, God. And God, we just want to say thank you right now, God. God, not to pray a long prayer, but God, we give you glory, God. Because God, if it had not been for you, God, God, we won't be here, God. So God, you said in the word that everything that has breath, praise you, Lord God. So God, we give you praise right now, God. For every opportunity, God, every step that we take, God, everything that you have given us up to this present time, God. God, we say thank you, God. So God, we lift our hand, God, right now, God. And God, we, we say thank you right now, God, for all you have done. But God, we thank you for the life that he has lived. And God, may he find rest. And peace with the family, God. And God, we be so careful to give you glory and to give you praise. It's all in the master's name of Jesus. That all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So Glad morning when this life is over.
be short with my remarks. Regarding my cousin. First, all praises to God. Uh, all the men of the cloth. Uh, my dear family and friends. Jesus. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been doing him since I guess our teenage years. Uh, when he would come to South Carolina during the summer and stay with his uh, aunt Ida and Uncle Tula. Yeah. Um, and one summer in particular, he came. And um, there was a summer program at the school that we attended. You know, people got jobs. And this particular summer, Rodney got a job. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how Rodney get a job in South Carolina at a school that I attend. <laughs> he don't live here, he don't work here, you know, and I was kind of upset with him <laughs> because he had gotten a job in the summer program at the school and I didn't get the job. And I, I never could figure that one out. And I would often ask him, well, right now, how would you able to get that job? <laughs> so don't worry about it, cuz. Don't worry about it. Um, Ryder would be at all the family reunions. And, and anytime he was in Bennettsville, we, he would call and we would talk. Um, Brittany, I've, I've never met you, uh, and I hate we have to meet of these circumstances, but you was the love of his life. His life. Yes. He yes. talked about you all the time. Yes. My last conversation with Rodney was last summer. Me and my best friend went to New York and on the visit and tour or whatever, and it was in July. So I called Rodney. I said, hey, cuz, um, I'm up here visiting and we're staying such and such and such a place. Rodney said, okay. I said, you, you gonna come by? He said, cuz, it is hot out there. <laughs> <laughs> now it is hot out there. And I won't be coming out. <laughs> he said, so now I might see you when the sun go down. He said, but for right now, no, I'm not coming out. And I could appreciate that because it was hot in New York on that day. I'm going to miss my cousin dearly. Even though he stayed miles and miles and miles away. But whenever we gathered together, it was like, I saw you yesterday. Uh, I love my cousin. Uh, I love all of my cousins. I'm glad I got to meet you, Brittany. Yeah. All I can say is sleep on cuz. I'm going to miss you. Amen. So different everywhere we go. <laughs> That's just how 
how he talks. <laughs> <laughs> and when he be smiling, yeah. Yeah. Right? I never see, yeah. honest God, I never see him right there upset. Mm -hmm. Charles, he would get upset, but he would say, you know, you know, they work. Yeah. They came down the song, they actually work in the field. Yes. Uh -huh. Y'all follow Charles. Yeah. Right? They pick up. They crop to battle. Oh. They do what it was. And that one year that Rodney did get that good job, yeah. I guess he had turned 16 or 17 or something like that. And Mama called for somebody and told Rodney to dress up, put on some nice shirt, and go for this interview. And Rodney came back and said he got that job at the school. And Rose was talking about, now I'm like, wow. Man, how did you get that job? Next day I know the phone. <coughs> Rodney picked up the phone. Mama said, Rodney got a phone call. Rose. You hear the background. I bet Rose on a bed of Crawford. They was upset because he got that job. And it was a good job, right? They could dress up neat, go to work, come back home neat. You didn't have to go in the fields anymore, pop the back, you wasn't working the kite or anything. So then, after for a while, I remember when Rodney and Charles, Blue Stan and Drake's, and you know that old big house and that porch was real high. Yeah. So um, I remember, you know, Ryan and Charles being from New York, you know, they knew everything. So they you know, <laughs> <laughs> I remember they told my brother Connie and Jim one day, you know, because I used to hang with them. They said that Ryan and Charles told them that they knew, they knew karate. <laughs> so you know, they from New York, mm, karate. You know, so about five minutes later, after they would get off the ground, y'all know what happened then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I could go on and on talking about Ryan and Charles, but one more I'm going to tell you, and that'll be it. It's when, uh, you know, you come down here, you're going to go to church. And so I remember when Mama told Charles and Ryan and them, Beverly, they was going on the morning, morning again. Mm -hmm. They're going to they get their lives saved. <laughs> so uh, she explained to them what to do, how to pray, and pray to God, close your eyes, and move. And uh, Charles would just be sitting there. I, mean, I was young enough, I didn't know when Charles was moving. He just sitting there. Rodney was moving. <laughs> I remember Rodney, and then they said Rodney would open his eyes and look around a little bit. He would walk some more. Neither one of them got related and jumped up. But Sam and Rodney would get home. I asked him about the experience. I said, how was it? He said, cuz it was alright, but oh, it was hot. I was thinking about what I was going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I would cut it off. I'd go it off. <laughs> Charles, do you want to rebut anything? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Rosa and Cousin Rosa, and thank you, um, Ricky. Nobody can do it like my brother Ricky. <laughs> thank you for those wonderful, wonderful, wonderful remarks. Um, I'm the youngest. Of, of my seven siblings. But um, not only am I the youngest of my seven siblings, but I'm the youngest on, in my generation of my first cousins. Not only on the Dixon side, but on the Oliver side as well. And it gives me an honor and a, and a privilege to stand here and share a few words with you all in reference to my cousin Rodney's life. But I will tell you, in, in all my writings, this has been the hardest. Yeah. Oh, God. This has been very, very hard um, to put in words Rodney's this life. But um, I do want to share a story with Rodney before, before I get into his, for the eulogy, though. Uh, when Ricky and, uh, was sharing about Rodney and them, they would come down and they worked in tobacco. Mm -hmm. And they, they well, they crop tobacco and they picked cotton. I remember one Sunday, when, uh, before I even got out of church, there was a message on my phone and I said, oh, Rodney called me. So I listened to the message and Rodney said, Perry, uh, when you get a chance, he said, I know you're in church, when you get a chance, give me a call. It's important. I said, okay, and so, I'm thinking something seriously had happened. So I called Rodney Brady, 
And so, right, it said that he was sitting there thinking, and he said, we lived in New York, and we picked cotton and tobacco. How did you get out of not picking <laughs> cotton and tobacco? It, no, 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 that's not, that's not true, that's not true. But there's an advantage of being the youngest one. There's a, there, there is an advantage, amen, amen. So I, I just told her, I said, Rodney, I just happened to born in 66. I just can't, I don't know, I know, but I thank God for it, amen, amen. I thank God for it, but um, just to share with uh, the eulogy for Rodney, um, things I knew that Rod Rodney, Rodney loved New York. Yeah. Rodney loved everything about New York. Ricky said Rodney loved food. Um, Rodney loved to laugh. Mm. And Rodney loved God. Yeah. Rodney loved the things of God. Rodney and I had several conversations about his walk with God and about going to church or being in church and things. And I hope my eulogy reflects on some of that. As I reflected on Rodney's journey, I was reminded of the powerful words of Tupac Shakur in his song, who was from New York. And he said, will there be a ghetto in heaven? In this reflection on life struggles and aspirations, Tupac captured the essence of resilience, resilience and hope that Rodney embodied throughout his life. When you talk to Rodney, Rodney was a person that never complained. I never heard Rodney complain at all. Rodney always gave encouraging words and was always laughing. So born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Rodney faced his share, his share of challenges, I'm sure, but he rose above them with grace and determination. He embraced his roots down here in South Carolina. He cherished his family and found joy in life's simple pleasures. It was the simple things in life that pleased Rodney. And that was his daughter, Brittany, and that was food, okay? <laughs> From his summers in Bennisville, South Carolina, to his illustrious military career, and his dedicated service to the Board of Education, Rodney touched the lives of all who had the privilege of knowing him, and it was a privilege to know him. He was a man of integrity whose actions spoke louder than any words could ever convey. His love for his daughter, Brittany, knew no bounds, and his presence in her life was a source of strength and inspiration. There has not been a time, Brittany, when I spoke with Rodney and talked with Rodney that he did not talk about you and what was going on in your life. Yeah. Now, he never did talk to me about your boyfriend, but he talked about everything else, okay? <laughs> so, I don't know what's up with that, but uh, he never talked to me about your boyfriend, okay? But that's good, okay? In Tupac's song, though, going back to Tupac's song, he pondered the existence of a ghetto in heaven, questioning whether the struggle of this life will follow us into the next life. But today, as we bid farewell to my cousin Rodney, we are reminded that heaven is not defined by earthly boundaries or societal labels. You do not have, you would you do not have to go to church every Sunday and wear a cross around your neck and carry a Bible up under your hand to say that you are going to go to heaven. But Rodney lived out his life. He may not have been in church every Sunday, but Rodney lived with love, with integrity. He lived out all of God's principles. So it is a place of eternal love where the soul of the righteous find peace and the solace and the embrace of the divine God that we serve. In, in reflecting on Rodney's remarkable journey, we are reminded of the lyrics of Tupac, whose words often echo the struggles and aspirations of so many. Tupac thought not, Tupac though not a church goer, but conventional standards, was known for his unwavering commitment to social justice, he 
talk about social change, his deep empathy and struggles for others. And when I was thinking about that and I was reading that about Tupac and stuff, I thought about Jesus in Luke 4, 18, when he says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind. Now, looking at Tupac and looking at St. Luke 4, 18, similarly, Rodney, though he may not have been a regular church attendee, he lived his life in accordance with the principles of God's word. He lived by the golden rule. Do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. He lived a life of love. He lived a life of kindness. And he lived a life of faith. Now, while Rodney may not have been a regular church goer in the traditional sense, his love for God was evident in the way that he lived his life. He treated others with dignity. He treated others with respect. He extended a helping hand to those that was in need. And he lived each day with gratitude and with humility as he thanked God for each day that he woke up and saw another day. His faith was not defined by the walls of the church but by the kindness and the compassion that he showed to his brothers and his sisters, to everyone that Rodney came in contact with. He showed love. He loved Beverly. He loved Charles. He loved Rose. He loved all his cousins. He loved you, Brittany. He loved his nieces and his nephews. Rodney was all about love. Rodney didn't like the fuss. He didn't like to argue, but he wanted peace in his life. Today, as we bid farewell to Rodney, we are reminded that heaven is not a place reserved for the religious elite, but for all who live their lives with love, compassion, and integrity. Rodney's soul has found its place among the angels. There is no more pain, no more sorrow, and no more tears. In clothing, let us remember that Rodney, remember Rodney with gratitude for the love that he shared, for the lives that he touched, and the indelible mark that he left within our hearts. Though he may no longer be with us in body, his spirit lives on in the countless lives he touched. May his memory forever be a blessing to us all. And may we strive to live our lives with that same love that rightly showed, that same kindness, and that same faith that he exemplified every day. Rest in peace, my dear cousin. Your light will continue to shine brightly in our hearts. Can I say, well done? Thy good and faithful servant. Rodney, you are free. You are free. You are free, Rodney. Praise the Lord that you are free, that there's no longer bound, no more chains holding you, Rodney. Because your soul is resting, and it's just a blessing. We want to praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God that he's free. Yeah. Can we say well done? Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. That good and faithful servant. Yeah. Well, done. well done. Amen. After the tank sings a selection, then I will turn it over to the morticians. 